Um, Zerto, um, Zerto 4.0, a little bit of history. Um, we started in 2009. Um, first release was in 2011. Um, this year we released um, 4.0, so that means a major release each year. And with 4.0, we added a few um, features that, that we decided, oh, let's change the look and feel of the company as well. So 4.0 is the thing we'll be presenting right now. So let's start with what is Zerto. So Zerto is a um, business continuity and disaster recovery solution for public, hybrid, and private clouds. And we utilize enterprise class virtual replication. Now that's a whole lot to process right now. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about how our replication works and what we exactly mean by enterprise class. Um, but what is our vision, right? We're, we're, we're at tick and pluck right now. We're talking a lot about all these new kinds of technologies, hyperconverged containers and all these kinds of things. Well, basically, Zerto wants to have a world of uninterrupted business for people, uh, uninterrupted technology for businesses and people. So that's keeping the technology up and running that people use right now and businesses use right now. Um, whether that's running on hyperconverged systems using VMware or traditional Hyperscaled is a term I heard today. Uh, Hyperscaled systems uh, uh, using using Hyper-V or cloud. Um, so so it's 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 much more than just being a, a business continuity or disaster recovery tool. So how did this all start? So what did Zerto do to re revolutionize the the BCDR business? Um, when we talk about disaster recovery, business continuity, especially in the old physical world, the first thing we think about is, oh, set up storage-based replication. I need to get my data from A to B. Well, my data is on my storage device. Wonderful. Let's use replication. Um, which worked great for physical workloads. I mean, we have server one that has a LUN attached. We'll enable replication on that LUN. All set. But nowadays, everything is virtualized. So, or 80% is virtualized. Uh, so we're managing VMs. We're not managing LUNs anymore because we're, we're all thinking in VMs and VMs are stored on the LUN, yes, but it's less important on which LUN. Of course, it has to have the performance, but still, we're managing VMs. So we thought that's the wrong layer to replicate in because all the I.O. is going to the storage, but the I.O. is being done by the VMs. And we are managing VMs or groups of VMs, not managing storage anymore. So the whole management layer or all, all, all the management is being done on VM level, not on LUN level anymore. So besides that, with all the flexibility that virtualization, uh, virtualization created, um, it doesn't matter anymore. Just run any x86 hardware, put a VM on it, and it will work. Uh, switch another to another x86 server, and it will work as well. So all the flexibility we had using virtualization, we basically didn't have when using storage and storage-based replication. Uh, because we needed box A, that means we had probably the same box on the other side with the same licenses to enable replication from storage box A to storage box B. Um, so what we did we do, we actually took that replication and put it into the hypervisor. Um, not replicating from storage A to storage B anymore. Well, yes, we are, but we're not managing LUNs. We're not replicating LUNs, we're replicating VMs or groups of VMs. Well, getting data from A to B, really important. But what is really important as well is making sure that, it's, that you automate it. Well, we had a, quite a session about automation as well. I mean, if you want to do a failover, if you want to move a workload, it has to be automated. So besides doing replication, we also created automation on top of that within the same product. So since we started in 2011, version one, we grew quite a bit. So as with any presentation, as soon as there are numbers on screen, they are outdated. So that means 1,200 plus customers. Um, also, 300 plus cloud service providers. Because besides using our software on enterprise level, so on, on enterprises itself, like on-premise, um, we also have the ability to make the tool multi-tenant. So these cloud service providers, they offer a disaster recovery as a service model to their end users. Um, and we talked about backup as a service as well before. Well, with Zerto you can uh, um, enable a disaster recovery as a service model. Besides that, we have 800 plus cloud service uh, channel partners that are all certified to implement, install, and sell Zerto. 
for the Dutch people among us, some of the, uh, the Dutch customers. Um, one of them is the um, Ministry of Economical Affairs, if I translated that correctly. They uh, actually didn't use Zerto for disaster recovery, but they needed a tool to move workloads from all the seven data centers they had to the two they were going to run it at. Um, all different types of hypervisors, VMware 4 until VMware 6, um, different type of storage devices. Um, so they utilized Zerto to do a migration from A to B, or actually from A, B, C, D, E, F, G to E and F. So what can you use Zerto for? Well, first of all, we can use it in a private cloud, meaning I've got a data center on location A, I've got a data center on location B, and I want DR between those sites. Install Zerto. Um, besides being compatible with VMware, in version 4.0, we also release support for Hyper-V, meaning that we can replicate from Hyper-V to Hyper-V as well. Um, but we also introduce something we'd like to call cross-hypervisor replication. That means we can also replicate from VMware to Hyper-V. All with the same feature set that we promise in our VMware to VMware solution, so that means an RPO of seconds and an RTO of minutes. Um, that's one of the first to do that right now. Besides that, we can also protect satellite offices or branch offices. Uh, the, there's a lot of companies that have one large headquarters and have all kinds of branch offices. They also are running VMware or a hypervisor down there with all kinds of VMs they need for the business as well. And they want to protect those VMs as well. So what we can do is with Zerto, do a one-to-many or a many-to-one replication and use the headquarters as a DR. Besides that, you can also use it in case of acquisitions. Um, let's say you acquire a new company, they have their own location, they have their own IT infrastructure. Most of the times it's running in hypervisor anyways. Uh, but how can I easily protect that one and make sure that it's um, on the same level DR that I'm used to and that I'm using in my organization? Simply deploy Zerto and let them replicate to the main, uh, to the headquarters. Well, as we have a network of over 300 cloud service providers right now, you could also not decide to build your own data center to do DR2, but you could choose one of the Zerto cloud service providers and contact them and use disaster recovery as a service. Simply install Zerto on the local site, let it replicate to one of the cloud service providers. And with version 4.0, we also released support for public cloud. Right now, only Amazon Web Services, Azure is on the roadmap as well, Google, et cetera, et cetera. So as we have a small team, you can ask questions anytime. Since I don't have a personal assistant, the guy in the back was first, sorry about that. <laughs> for the service provider part, is it, do I need access to the hypervisor or is there like a a gateway that's encrypted and doesn't require like an IPsec tunnel or something? So we need, so we have a sp specific multi-tenant deployment for that. We have something that we'd like to call the Zerto Cloud Connector, which is basically a gateway that protects all the um, service providers infrastructure from the end user. So there's, there, you don't have to provide access to your hypervisor from the, uh, to the customer. So specifically, multi-tenancy is built into the product. So no need for a tunnel also? Yes, you need a tunnel. So, and it, so we don't do any encryption. The only thing we do is compression. So if you want to protect that traffic, you need a, either a direct connection or a routable network or IPsec VPN tunnel. So what does the, uh, the IT landscape look like right now? So we have on-premise workloads. That would be VMware, Hyper-V workloads running all kinds of applications, uh, SAP, Exchange Server, you name it. Um, besides that, there's, a, there's uh, a lot of companies that outsource some of their infrastructure or some of their applications to managed service providers. Um, the next step would be public cloud. Um, looking at a lot of uh, companies are, are looking at AWS or Azure to put uh, certain workloads into Azure. Um, besides that, there's the next generation like Docker um, um, being looked at right now. Um, I think like wide adoption within the enterprise. And I know that it has been talked about at the other Tech Unplugged in, uh, in London as well, that um, to adopt Docker, um, a lot of 
applications need to be either redeveloped or redesigned or for Docker. So it will take a while, but I know a lot of people are looking at it right now because it's, everybody's talking about it right now. So uh, another thing is SaaS. So what Zerto is looking to be, hopefully, with all the developers working on it right now, is to protect everything that we have in the IT landscape. So making sure, and it's less about DR, it's less about business continuity, although workload mobility is also something you could share under the business continuity flag. Um, it's more about making sure your workload can be run, ran across multiple cloud providers, multiple managed service providers, multiple on-premise sites. Um, looking at applications, they have a certain value to the business. That value can change. So you might want to be running it on-premise at a certain point in time, then the value decreases and, and you need to run it in something cheaper and you might think about deploying it in a public cloud, you can move that workload to AWS. We're even looking at how can we integrate so we can protect and even move SaaS workloads. So this is the vision of Zerto, looking to be um, as something we call a cloud continuity platform, but being like the glue between all those different kinds of ways of deploying and ways of running your workload and making those workloads mobile. That makes sense to you all. So a little bit uh, about the Zerto uh, uh, architecture, and, and this is specifically for private cloud deployments. So these, these are the components that we need and that we will install in your environment. So it all starts with the Zerto Virtual Manager, which is basically our, and this term has been yelled across this room already a couple of times, our automation and orchestration engine. Um, and besides that, it also hosts the GUI. So this is basically the brains behind the solution. Um, but with brains, you also need um, like the, the worker bees of the solution. So as soon as the ZVM is running, and the ZVM is actually nothing else than a Windows server is running on a Windows VM or Windows physical machine, um, we can install the worker bees of the solution, which are VRAs, virtual replication appliances. And these appliances make sure that all the I.O. that's being sent from the VMs is being replicated to the other side. So there's one VRA installed on every hypervisor within the solution, um, so it's scalable as well. These are small machines, um, resilient. They also uh, are responsible for any uh, compression and throttling if enabled. Um, so we can natively compress all the I.O. before it's sent over to the, to the other side. And besides that, we also use journaling technology. And that's something we do on the other side, on the recovery side. So every time a VM creates an I.O., that's a, basically a block that's being sent to storage, we replicate it to the other side and we put it in a journal. And this journal is basically nothing else than a list of all the IOs that the VM generated. And between those IOs, we place checkpoints. And checkpoints are points in time you can recover to. So you can actually do a failover to your infrastructure like it was an hour ago. And this enables you, no, uh, this protects you not only from like disasters, like, oops, my data, data center exploded, but it also protects you from logical failures, like database corruption, or virus outbreaks, or, or numerous other things that can happen to your environment. A little bit more about the journal. The journal can keep changes or track changes from everything from a history of one hour to two weeks. And the checkpoints are created every few seconds, so it creates a granularity of seconds. So I can roll back to a certain point in time that was seconds before a disaster. So how does this out replication work? First of all, the I.O. is being sent from the VM to the storage. We copy it from memory, compress it, send it over to the other side, put it in a journal. Done. And this is a continuous process. So it's continuous block level replication. So that means that every time an I.O. gets sent to the storage, we re replicate it over. So that means we can actually achieve an RPO of seconds by using this technology. Ah. There's no performance impact. So we do not use snapshots, first of all. And second of all, it's an asynchronous technology. So there's no acknowledgement being sent to the VM because we don't need to. So it has no impact on the performance of the production VMs. 
I have five minutes left, so I have to do it really fast right now. So no, uh, so no uh, production. Uh, so that's one of the reasons we are enterprise class. There's no impact on the production uh, performance, on the production performance. Besides that, it's scalable. Every time you add a hypervisor, we add a VRA and we add more replication power. Storage agnostic. It doesn't matter what kind of storage is attached to the hypervisor, whether it's SOM, NAS, DOS, iSCSI, Fiber Channel, vSAN, you name it. We don't care because we catch that I.O. from within the hypervisor. That means we can also replicate to any type of device, pure to NetApp, NetApp to IBM, Tintree to whatever vendors are here. So one VRA per host? So one VRA per host, yeah. Sorry. Too late. <laughs> So we use TCP, so it will retransmit. Um, what you will see is a spike in the I.O., oh, in the RPO, oh, okay. because we'll run behind. Yeah. Uh, we use a filter driver on Hyper-B and a sort of path selection policy on VMware. For? Caching the I.O. So we don't cache I.O.s. Catch. Oh, cache I.O.s. We use a kernel driver for that, so both on VMware and on Hyper-V using the different types, sets of APIs available in vSphere and in Hyper-V. Besides that, we can replicate from VMware to Hyper-V. We do automatic disk conversion. Actually, we do not converge. We replicate into the, um, um, the uh, format of the destination. Hmm? <coughs> Two minutes, OK. Uh, and besides using it for disaster recovery, you can also use it for migration purposes. So one important other thing that right now, if we take a look at enterprise applications, it's not one VM anymore. It are multiple VMs. And if we place those VMs into a specific, into a group, into a virtual protection group, that something we use in, in Zerto, a virtual protection group will make sure that all those VMs are protected consistently, meaning that if I um, fail over, uh, 10 VMs within a VPG, all those VMs will come up as they were at exactly the same point in time. So that means there's no time difference between the VMs. So there's, if the application syncs to each other, we have a database server and an indexing server, these will all be back in exactly the same point in time. Besides that, we also support within the points in times, VSS, other kinds of scripts that allow application consistency, basically a VCR or DR, automation, Really easy to use interface, and we automate everything for you. Meaning, automatically create the VMs on the recovery side, giving them new IP addresses or MAC addresses if needed, running scripts, um, commit policy. There's built in failover tests, non disruptive, so the uh, replication will keep going on. Um, we can start it in a different network bubble, and we can use that for migration as well. And we have automated fill back automation as well. And we could put everything offsite as well for that third copy that you need if you want to have proper data protection. Same interface, whether you're using Hyper-V, AWS, or VMware, um, all in one dashboard, you can see all the KPIs, replication, traffic being sent over. And we also support multi-tenancy for cloud service providers or enterprises that have multiple teams working on different types of VMs. Let's say application A, they can do their own failover, their own failover testing by using a self-service portal. So what can Zerto do for you? We can do DR. You can use this to burst in clouds. You can do, use it as an on-ramp to clouds, um, migrate workloads, um, modernize your data center by, by using different types of storage technology and just replicate a certain set of VMs to that storage but also allowing you to do a failback, which is, I mean, storage vMotion is beautiful, but as soon as it takes you four hours to storage vMotion something to the other side, it also takes you four hours to replicate back in case anything goes wrong with that new type of storage. Um, share services, and now I have to quit. Any questions, I'll be in the main room <laughs> at the nice Certo table, and I can do a demo if you'd like to. Thank you. Good.